G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this is a video tutorial on using clipping masks in Photoshop. This is a tutorial which is part of a group of tutorials about uh, painting in Photoshop. So if you want to check out the rest of those, click the link on the left or in the description to uh, check out the rest of the tutorials. Uh, and it's also the uh, part of a group of tutorials making up the painting of an image. And if you want to just watch the entire process super sped up just to a couple of minutes, you can watch the speed painting of the finished product by clicking the link on the right or the link in the description. So jumping straight into it, as I had mentioned in the beginning, this is a tutorial on using clipping masks. Now what is a clipping mask? This is the image that we're going to be painting, but to demonstrate what a clipping mask is first, I'm going to hide that and make a clipping mask. So I have my layers panel here on the left, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to draw a red circle. Oh, how advanced we are. So here is my really well drawn red circle. Now to demonstrate what a clipping mask is, I create a new layer on top of it and I hold the Alt key on the keyboard and click that line and see when I mouse over with the Alt key, you see that shape appears. If I click that when the shape is there, it does this little, little connection thingy to the layer below it and that creates what we know as a clipping mask. So if I select a different color, let's say blue, and use the same brush and draw, even if I scribble all over, it only stays within that image. So if I alt the line, alt click the line between them again, I separate them, and that's what it's actually done. But by alt clicking and connecting layers like that and creating a clipping mask, I'm able to uh, keep within the lines and color in within the lines without any issues at all. And I can add layers to the clipping mask. So if I add another layer, Alt, click between those two, I have another one. I'll select a, a green color and add a circle with, a, um, I don't know, I'll just do another thing just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. But you can see that I don't draw outside of that initial circle that I created. Now, why is this important? I'll delete that example. But in painting the image of this guy, uh, I want to be able to focus on details, but also be able to paint larger areas of it without worrying about going over the lines. And so in this video, we're going to be setting up the clipping masks ready to paint. Okay, so first things first, I like to divide uh, the parts of my portraits into folders. So I'm going to create a few folders. I'm going to have one, I'm going to call it skin. I'm going to create another one, which I'm going to call hair. Another, which I'll call shirt and a final one which I will call other. Okay, now in the other layer I'll do things like the eyebrow, uh, sorry, the eyes, and uh, if I do other things, perhaps like blood or, you know, lighting effects, I might have a separate folder for that. So I'm gonna go into my skin folder and create a new layer inside of it. And now at the very top I have my line work on a transparent uh, background, it's a PNG. So if I draw on this layer in the skin folder, you can see that it appears behind Oops, I'll do it with a black. You can see that it appears behind that light blue line work that I've done. So I'm going to go up here at the top and bring down the opacity of my line work. So it's hard to see, or not hard to see, but just less visible. I'm going to go back to my new skin layer and I'm going to create my clipping mask. Now, it doesn't matter what color you do it in, frankly. Uh, sometimes I like to do really bright, vibrant colors so it's very easy to see uh, adjacent to other colors. But for the sake of this, we're just going to pick a mid skin tone sort of color. So let's pick this. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to outline the, the boundaries of where my clipping mask will be. What I mean by that is I'm going to select my brush, bring it down to a medium sort of size. And on the very edges and borders of where the skin goes, I'm going to draw my border. So I'm going to fast forward this process so it doesn't bore you. There we go. I've finished drawing the borders of where I would like this clipping mask to be. Now I just select my magic wand and click inside the areas that I drew. Now I hit M to go to my, uh, that's my hotkey to select my marquee selection tool. 
Now, if I just fill this, I'm going to hide the top line so you can see what I'm talking about. If I just get my bucket and fill this, you can see that if I diselect, I've got this edge, this ugly edge here. So I'm going to show you how to not do that. So I'm just going to undo that. I go to select up in the top menu. I hit modify and expand. And I do it by, let's say, uh, between three and five. I'll just go three pixels and hit enter. Uh, and that has expanded my selection. Now I hit M, right click, fill, and use foreground color, making sure it's selected as the same fill. And then hit fill. And there we go. I've gotten rid of that nasty white edge thing. The other thing I want to do is uh, with these, this top line work, because it's light and the uh, other things I'm drawing are light as well, it does this weird contrast. So I'm going to instead go inside this, hit color overlay and make it black and hit OK. And as you can see, it's much harsher now, but I can bring the opacity down a lot so that I can have still very vivid line work on top, but in drawing on the layers underneath, they show a lot clearer. So I'm going to go through my skin layer, just refine the edges a tiny bit, make sure that there's no little bits hanging out that I don't want hanging out because keeping in mind you want your clipping masks to be really refined and that just means making sure that the base layer is exactly the way you want it. So I've done my skin clipping mask, now I'm going to go through and do the exact same thing for the hair in its own folder, the shirt and the others which are things like the eyes. And there we go, I have finished setting up the clipping masks. Now I'll just go through my layers and show you what I've done. I reordered uh, the, the positions of some of the folders just because sometimes you want certain layers on top of others. For example, hair is at the very top because it overlaps everything in this image. It overlaps the, uh, the shirt and the skin and all that stuff. So I made sure to have hair at the top. Now I know the hair looks a little bit greeny yellow at the moment but that's just my mid-tone color I've selected when I add highlights and shadows it's going to look different uh, then under that I have other which at the moment is just eyes and uh, in the end I might end up adding things but for now I'm just keeping it simple then under that I have shirt which is pretty self-explanatory and then under that I have skin at the very base now if I hide the line work you can see that this almost looks like a bit of a paper cutout image and that's great because this is the the perfect base to start off with our clipping masks and uh, if I create a new layer above and create a clipping mask on the skin and you know select a lighter color I'll be able to muck around with that all I want without screwing up any of the other layers so we've set up the clipping masks for the, this image uh, and join me in the other tutorials where I finish off painting the picture thanks for watching make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos you can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description and remember to share any art animation or game you make on newgrounds.com until next time see you later